It's B. Cameron Gain with the New Stack. I'm here today with Jordan Scher, Director of Marketing, and Kurt Thorin, Solutions Consultant. Both are from OpsRamp, a platform for hybrid enterprise infrastructure management with an AI ops emphasis. Thanks for joining us today. All right. Thank you, Cameron. So we're often asked the question at OpsRamp, what sort of pain are we in the business of solving? You know, why are we in existence? And I, I personally like to bring up this slide a lot because I really do think it brings the pain to life. We live in a world now where digital transformation is obviously accelerating and uh, it has added more complexity to the conversation of, of particularly in, in IT operations and infrastructure. It's not less. We've got more point tools. We've got more different types of infrastructure from cloud native resources all the way down to legacy resources. Um, and we have more pressure being put on different business units to find their own solutions and act like startups. And this has just added um, a, a certain degree of complexity that is not continuously being solved by all the different other point tools in the marketplace. So um, we have an, a, an existing problem that infrastructure is now everywhere and everything, whether it's data center, on-prem, uh, the different multi-cloud providers or cloud native infrastructure uh, in and of itself. You've got this problem where the business, every business unit is now acting like a startup with a credit card. They can source their own point tools. They can spin up different versions of the same tool across the organization. Um, they can add and subtract uh, cloud resources as needed. This is added to overall complexity. And the result is, is uh, paralyzing that there's no visibility or control anymore for these hybrid, multi-cloud, cloud-native environments. And consequently, central IT, the IT organization, can't prevent downtime and ultimately can't do its job of maintaining and delivering excellent customer experiences. So this brings us to the rise of OpsRamp, the service-centric AI ops platform for hybrid enterprise infrastructure management. We are born from an, uh, an MSP tradition uh, our company is built of folks who worked in, in providing managed service delivery um, across a variety of different organizations to very big clients. And those folks that build the platform ask themselves the question, what do central IT teams really need? And ultimately, it comes down to the ability to see everything, to be able to take action on what they're seeing, and then to be able to optimize that action so the infrastructure is running more seamless and the overall organization can move from a very traditional IT operations management posture into this future of site reliability, customer experience and digital experience monitoring and management, and an overall DevOps posture, which is the future of enterprise IT. So this is how the platform is currently parsed to deliver on that promise. It starts with discovery, where we offer visibility across all of the different assets that I mentioned before. It then gets into intelligence, where you can start to take action on all of the assets that we have auto-discovered on the platform. We can see business services in context. We can see um, the makeup of different IT elements forming that business service. So we can see topology and app dependency. Then you can monitor uh, these business services for availability and uptime. And you can uh, take action on what you're seeing and what you're monitoring through smarter event management. You can then alert uh, different uh, teams across the organization to deliver IT operations as a service through intelligent notifications. And you can resolve issues with remote access and audit and automated automation policies delivered from the SaaS platform. So all of a sudden now, with this platform, Central IT has a governance and flexible framework to accommodate the changing nature of digital transformation across the overall organization. But that's not it. We've also added AI ops, which we call ops queue within the organization to different levels of the platform to drive a more seamless experience. So for example, we have ops queue at the event management level, which will ingest alerts. And my friend Kurt will deliver this uh, demonstration here in a moment. It'll ingest alerts from third party sources and from infrastructure to help you determine root cause and escalate that root cause to the proper team. It brings a different perspective, a different uh, posture to your policy-based monitoring, where you can ingest different data sources and derive insights, actionable insights from those data sources. And then finally, it can also help automate smarter policies for alerting the right teams at the right time. And this is where we believe that artificial intelligence can currently drive the most value to an IT operations team that's looking to be more seamless. 
The results have already been delivered across a variety of customers. So if we look at the uh, raw alert volume and instance generated at a typical organization, you know, the numbers are, are kind of paralyzing here, 43,000 alerts per week, which is incredible for an IT team to manage. When you bring an ops queue, it dramatically reduces the number of raw alerts that they need to deal with. It dramatically decreases the number of incidents that they need to escalate. And um, it simplifies their life by creating these inferences, which Kurt will take you through here in a moment, that can correlate alerts so that the, comp- the business doesn't have to do that manually anymore. So this is the real promise of AI ops. And what I want to do now is ultimately hand it over to my friend, Kurt, who's going to take you through the four primary use cases where our customers derive the most value from using the OpsRAM platform. Actually, before you, before you do that, you know, one question or two questions, actually. Uh, going back to the slide before last, uh, the case study, if, yeah. if it's possible to go back. Excellent. That, uh, I would suggest, strongly suggest, that could be a subject of a great blog post. That and just extrapolating on that. Great. Fascinating. Yeah. Just that yeah. shows metrics numerically how that works. And it's fascinating, actually. I was 43,000 uh, alerts. Indeed, uh, that yeah. would be interesting. And then uh, the, que- the other question I had, though, was, you know, how important is the AI aspect? Is that the main, um, actually, I had three questions. Is that the main feature? And also, how does this differ from a t- typical APM solution? Those are great questions. Um, so I, uh, I mean, I can, I can say I want to really hand it off to Kurt because he's definitely the expert. Yeah, yeah sure. So uh, when it comes down to when it look at APM solutions, those are really code level inside of an application, measuring transactions and performance between different phones to give you an entire overview of that application's performance. But they're not giving you insight into the health of the infrastructure that 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 application is running on, no matter whether it's on premise in the cloud, you know, the network infrastructure there. Uh, when okay. we start thinking about what we're doing, is we're we're actually monitoring the entire ecosystem in which those applications live. Now, we can take an APM feeds from many tools and start to put those into the AI and correlate those with the events happening in the infrastructure. But where our core competency is, we want to see the health of the infrastructure that the, the applications are living on. Now, the AI apps is very important because we do the complete monitoring, which you'll see here in a minute. Um, and it makes the AI a lot more effective because we're not just pulling in feeds. A lot of AI tools are basically, or AI apps tools are, hey, take whatever tool 20 different monitoring tools that you have out there and throw in the event feeds. And then we'll start to correlate and look at all these and try to figure out our best guess for what's going on to see a pattern for how they're occurring. And that's great. And that was a good first gen swag at AI operations. But what we're bringing to the table is that we have a holistic view of the context that these applications and infrastructures are living in. We know the relationships between the resources out there, the network. We know the types of hardware they're running on. And we're grabbing all these events natively and pulling them in. So we're speaking the same language. That gives us a lot richer context for the AI ops inferences that we're pulling out, if that makes sense. We'll see it in action here in a minute. Excellent. Does that work for you? Absolutely. So typically, uh, four primary use cases where we drive the most value for customers of the platform. The first is obviously very um, a standard hybrid infrastructure monitoring with the twist because we do bring AI ops into that conversation. So you can monitor alerts, you can determine root cause a little faster, you can use the machines to kind of take over and understand your environment a little bit more deeply. We have AI ops, uh, as Kurt has mentioned, for proactive digital operations with event management, with uh, root cause alert escalation and remediation and integration with your ITSM tools. Uh, that's where intelligent incident management comes in. We work with the latest and greatest, including ServiceNow and Avanti, to provide a seamless, both proactive monitoring posture for an organization that works in concert with your reactive ITSM posture. So you can see things coming and then you can remediate them more quickly. And then finally, as I mentioned before, Digital Operations Command Center, which is bringing everything together, your point tools, your infrastructure, your different uh, IT teams, all together operating on one platform for a truly contextual view of your operational health. And now, Kurt, can I hand it over to you and you can show us the goods? Sure thing. Thank you, Brian. All right. Thank you. 
So this is uh, kind of just the high level starting, but this is that concept of the digital command center and monitoring the hybrid cloud. We'll get into it in a little bit here, but really seeing what's going on behind the scenes at, at a high level in a dashboard for these metrics. And we can already see here at the top that I've got some AI inferred stats. We've processed almost 2 million events. These are raw events that have come in from our you know, their network, our infrastructure, our, our virtual our resources, our cloud resources. And this is a lot of noise that, def, that typically teams would have to sort through to figure out where's an underlying problem problem is. Well, what we're doing is we're taking and adding and making sense of this noise. We're filtering it. We're deduplicating it. We're correlating it together. And we can see right here on this main page that out of those 2 million alerts, we've reduced that down in our 2 million events. We've got only 700,000 alerts. And out of those alerts, well, we've made 10,000 inferences. Now, these would translate generally to issues or something you'd notify somebody to go fix. But we've optimized 92% of that. Now think about that in time saving and in, in, in effort in man hours, right? Um, that's a lot of time people will be spent filling, filtering through that noise to try to make sense of it and get to it. But we can point people right to those underlying causes, help reduce mean time to, to repair for the, the incidents and the service outages. Or even if we're thinking about DevOps, when they roll a new piece of code into containers or Kubernetes, which we do monitor and that we'll see, they can start to see what the performance is in almost real time if they put out a piece of code that's maybe got a memory leak or spiking a CPU. Um, real value across the board for IT teams. But I can start to manage here everything from the, the health of my services, and I can see my ERP service and its components got a couple issues. I can drill into it and start to see how we've modeled this service from an operational infrastructure within OpsRamp. And I can see that this is actually a database issue uh, down to an issue on one of my SQL clusters. Now, I can click right in here to see the alert, see that it's been ticketed in an ITSM system and get to it quickly. Um, we'll actually come back and take a look at this in a moment. But ideally, this is a secondhand thought. With our AI ops, we're already taking, doing the inference, trying to run our automation uh, to remediate this, whether it's through our runbook automation or through external tools like an Ansible. Um, and if we can't do it there, then we're going to drive escalations. OpsRamp has built-in on-call rotations to notify people based on work schedules on their shifts. So a lot of power there about how we can start to notify people. Visualizing it out in the service map is just one aspect of that. How long for the inferences, how long or what time period did that cover? This is uh, from uh, December when we rolled out this release. Okay, actually, I see 51 days, excuse me, 51 days. Uh, yeah. I believe that. Was well, this is, this is, the, this is uh, one year, but it, sh it should be since December when this instance went live. I see. Okay, excellent. And it, again, the, the volume optimized, that applies, that percentage metric applies to the total inferences, inferences, is that right? Correct. Total, total raw instances that we've monitored or we've been fed in into OpsRamp in this uh, instance of the platform, and then uh, what we've processed out of it. And we can even start to take this into an, to another level here. So I drilled into my ERP dashboard. This is a closer view, but it's basically bringing up the metrics around this service itself. But something that we're doing too, uh, kind of overlapping into the APM type of area, but not really, not quite the same thing because we don't go down to that level, though we can accept feeds from an APM tool, is that we do have synthetic transaction monitoring. So for a lot of people, the time that you're going to start to experience an issue or know that there's an issue with the system that you've got out there is when users start to complain. It's like, hey, it's taking me, you know, two, three seconds longer to process a transaction than normal. And most times people just sit and wait. They're not going to call in because it's taking a few seconds longer. Well, we can automate those types of transactions and navigation paths through web applications and start to monitor those and set alerts and thresholds on. And you can see right here that I've actually tied in a synthetic transaction into my business service. This, and I've tied event rules around this to notify me that when I exceed a policy definition for what I expect a transaction to be, start driving an alert, start driving a notification to get people out ahead of this problem that's emerging. Excellent. But we can really start to bring this all together with things like uh, voice over IP performance. We see a lot of folks uh, starting to manage this type of thing uh, out there with it. Or if we're going to start to get insights into hybrid infrastructure, uh, we do both on-premise and in the cloud, no matter where it is. We'll bring these all together and start to provide visibility, uh, as well as, and we'll take a closer look at this, containers. I know that this is a big topic for development teams in, in DevOps and getting into it. Containers, microservices are all the rage and where the industry is going to be going in the next two, three years. We're already in there. We're monitoring the, the Googles, the Kubernetes, Docker containers, all those technologies we're ready for as are emerging and more organizations are starting to adopt them and move them out of the DevOps world into the production world. Okay. 
And that's, uh, so you have 36 containers running there. Mm -hmm. We also will take care of them. We're getting back to that hybrid cloud monitoring. We can give you a visibility into the hybrid cloud, the performance, but also where that spend is. So if we want to see, you know, a budget across the month, maybe our DevOps teams are spinning up resources um, and they're getting close to their monthly allocated budget, we can track that and we can even drive things like notifications uh, to let them know that they're going to be exceeding their budget or they're within, you know, X percent of uh, that budget for the month and then drive automations or integrations into tools like CloudBolt or ServiceNow if you're using it for provision those cloud environments to make sure that you put in an extra level of approval, approval and rigor before you go over that budget. So a lot of capabilities around that from a, you know, a cloud perspective and costing, not just the monitoring itself. Any questions on this before we jump in and take a look at the, the real meat and potatoes of OpRamp? Uh, yeah, actually, I mean, obviously, I just want to confirm, though, that this can apply to multi-cloud infrastructures. It can apply not to serverless Lambas. It can it can apply to across yeah, the Absolutely. Board. Okay. And that's where we're going with this screen right here. There's If there's no single screen uh, in OpsRamp that people see that they need to remember what we do and tells our story, it's this one right here. Where I can see, traditionally, you have a different tool for monitoring uh, your, your network, a different tool for monitoring your yeah. servers, a different yeah. tool for monitoring your storage. I we want to bring it all together, right? Okay. So we can do multi-cloud, multi-providers. Uh, right here, I can see that I've got my Google, my AWS. I've got two accounts in AWS, one Azure account. I've got my Kubernetes uh, host cluster that I'm monitoring here. I've got servers. I've got network devices out here. I've got storage devices. Now, the power behind this is instead of taking and monitoring all these separately and trying to, you know, feed in the right events and correlate them together and hope that I've tuned my algorithm right and I've parsed everything, we're yeah. collecting all of this natively. And because okay. we're doing some other things like getting topology information about that, we're able to wrap context, but we're speaking the same language, which makes AI ops for OpsRamp almost a turnkey proposition. And I'll show you when we get into the setup here how easy it is to enable it. Yeah, that's that was the question I had. How hard is it to set up? So great. Okay, look forward to it. Extremely easy, and we'll see. But I do want to show you a couple capabilities around here because this is really this is really the heart of it, right? Because we can't do AI ops unless we're collecting that core event data, uh, and then what's going on in the environment because you know that's that's your garbage in, garbage out. You have to have good data. So we want to make sure that we have good, accurate, concise data. Um, so we can take a look here a little bit about what we're monitoring. I've got servers out here. We monitor everything, Windows, Linux servers. We'll take a closer look, but even applications. So database performance, again, something that might be relevant to the DevOps folks watching this, is that we can come in here and not just monitor, you know, server up, down, you know, what's the CPU, but we can also start to go out here and see what, what are our table locks? How long is a query taking? What's our table sizes or free space. Uh, and these are all driving events and alerts that are feeding into the AI ops engine behind the scenes, our ops queue. We can also see what software is installed. Great thing about this too, and this might uh, have an impact for the, the ops folks if they're out here managing things, is that this is actionable. I can come out here and start and stop services if I want to, or even remote shell in or, or transfer files into something. Everything that's performed by an action through the Ops Ramp console is going to be monitored and audited through, an, through a recording. So for those folks out there that are working in highly regulated industries like financial or, or government, we've got the ability to be able to have these, every time somebody touches a system, have a, uh, a remote uh, access log for that. Who did it and what they did. But again... It's one console for folks who are working in their infrastructure here. I can go in without having to go to a different tool, and I want to look at my uh, routers out here. Say I'm not going to a different tool. I can click in and see the information that I'm gathering is different. This is everything that's specific uh, to a piece of network infrastructure, even down to monitoring the actual interfaces itself. So one of the great things about OmsRamp is we're continuously monitoring, discovering the environments on the cloud or on-premise, no matter where they are. So if a new piece of, uh, you know, virtual load balancer comes on Azure or AWS, we're going to feed that. We're going to start to monitor it based on policies you set up. Uh, we can even look at custom tags. I know one of our customers does that for their virtualization environments. If they look at it and they have a project code, and then they know we need to put this uh, monitoring template on it with these pre-built thresholds. We need to assign it to this business service. And then we also need to assign it to a specific escalation and notification path and, and on-call rotation for the people who are supporting this uh, new piece of virtual infrastructure. So a lot of capabilities around there to automate what's traditionally been a manual job for people uh, to go uh, start uh, managing a piece of uh, equipment out in the infrastructure. 
again, storage, showing you a couple of the things that we do out here around it, uh, give you an idea. Again, all this information being fed into the same console, which we'll see in a second, that has AI apps behind it to, to make sense of all the, the chaos and the noise that's out there. The big thing about this, though, when we start looking at it, is the multi-cloud aspect. Uh, so if I come in here and look at my AWS, we can go out and take a look at one of my accounts. We're managing absolutely everything, not just EC2, light sale instances, gateway, uh, remote database monitoring out here, load balancers, things like Lambda, which I'm sure a lot of development people are using right now to take advantage of the, the AI. So, and the board. Yeah. All of these things are out here to give people visibility and control over what's actually happening in their environments. So give you a little bit better idea how we manage this. I'll come down here and take a look at my topology. And we can uh, do topology from a couple different aspects here. So again, remember, we want to add context to this and, and enrich the data that we're getting. It's not just raw events. So part of that is actually discovering the topology of the physical network with CDP and LLDP to see which network components are, are, are talking to each other or connected to each other, as well as being able to do applications itself from a number of uh, uh, applications out here that are very common, especially in the development world for some of those large uh, workloads like Cassandra and Elasticsearch that's out here. But we also bring this visibility into the cloud environments also. So if I go out here and take a look at my AWS, I can come out here and say, hey, let's get the big picture here for my VCP, VPC. And we're discovering this topology and infrastructure. Now, a lot of question that we get is, especially from folks who are familiar with the uh, ITSM world, is, wow, this looks a lot like a service map in the CMDB. And the answer to that is, yes, it kind of is, but this is a completely different view. We're building these relationships, and we can use this to populate a CMDB and an ITSM tool. But the information that we're gathering here is so that we can have context to our inference engine in the AI ops. So that we, we know an edge router goes down, that we're going to get those events. But we also know that the 900 events coming in from resources downstream of that need to be correlated back to that one event. And it's not just noise that's going to be slamming people. So question? Yeah. So how long would that take manually as opposed to how long does that take? I don't know if you could do this manually. Mm. I mean, that's, that's kind of the magic. I mean, you could build it up, but I don't think you'd ever get this insight, especially with as dynamic uh, as environments are with elastic technologies on the web. Something spins up based on load. You're you're just not going to keep on top of that as, with a manual effort. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, great. Last but not least, getting into containers too. We do monitor uh, containers and also emerging things like Mesosphere uh, out there, our native capabilities. And in fact, we just released our Mesosphere and our, our latest release last Friday. Um, but able to get out here and see, hey, we've got a container out here, our microservice running that we want to be able to track, see its performance. Um, all these things are out here. You can apply monitoring templates, get notifications if you start to spike, or maybe a piece of code went out there and, and, and did something bad that, you, that was impacting the, the health of the infrastructure or the resources. All of this is native OpsRamp instrumentation. You buy OpsRamp, you get to monitor all of this. There's no separate add-ons or plugins that you need to buy or, or a separate vendor's tool to feed in. This is all of our uh, core platform that uh, we want to bring to market to kind of solve that problem of, you know, making sense out of everything that's going on out there. Okay, excellent. So let's go take a look at this in action here with uh, okay. with our alerts console. Okay, question? Yeah, just I was wondering, um, is it possible maybe, or in what sequence, maybe just show how it's set up or... Yeah, we're going to look at this, and it'll make sense after I uh, show you how we how it looks here in our alerts console. Okay. We'll show you how we set up our AI ops and how easy okay. it is. All right. All right. So um, I'm in my alerts console right here. And I'm actually going to flip this through. Uh, we're going to go to my inference view. And this is where we actually see the AI ops uh, coming into play. So what's done is this is, if you've ever looked at an operations console before with event management, there's not too much you can do to revolutionize it, right? It's what's the timestamp, what's the event? Is it red, yellow, green, uh, based on the status and, and what's going on with it? Um, but what we've done is we've added a couple fields here that I'm going to talk you through. And this is where that ops QAI ops that we have in machine learning comes to bear. Is that we can see right here, if we look at this alert here for this critical interface in and out, that what I've done and getting to those raw alerts on that slide that Jordan showed you a little bit earlier, first thing we did was we filtered out the noise. This 51 tells me that this event happened 51 times. Well, we're smart enough to know that, hey, you know, this, this device sending me the alert 
never healed. So this is the same event happening 50 times. The first one's the only one that we matter. So let's deduplicate that noise, correlate it back here to this and say, you know, there's only really one event that's happened, but it happened 50, 51 times. The next thing that we do is when we start to see the AI come into bear are these little boxes here. These are actually where the AI comes into an inference and starts to make a play based on co-occurrence, uh, based on patterns of the events that they come in, based on the topology or the relationships out there about the infrastructure or the application. This is where the AI and machine learning comes into play. We even do things like seasonal suppression. So if at the end of the week, your dev folks bring off their virtual machines to save costs on, over the weekend on those and they fire up again, well, typically in an environment like that, um, you're going to start to get alerts for all those uh, machines that are no longer pullable or no longer reachable. They're going to say, hey, these are offline. You're going to get event and event after event. Well, OpsRAM will, act, OpsRAM will actually learn those patterns. We call it seasonality and auto suppression. Uh, but we'll learn, hey, every week you turn these off, so let's suppress those events. Or maybe you have something like a, a school uh, that has high registration twice a year. We'll learn those types of patterns and automatically suppress those so that you're, there's not a lot of uh, work or noise for the ops teams to filter through. But here we can see that the system has actually taken 40 separate events and correlated those. And what that means is that just like that first event that happened 51 times, we knew only one mattered. The, these other 40 events happened multiple times. Most of them happened just twice, but we filtered those out. And we said, you know what, based on what we know about the topology, the co-occurrence, the relationships of the applications, these 40 items are probably correlated to this one single event being the root cause. Mm -hmm. So when we... We, we want to send this out to people. This is the problem that they should start looking at to fix. Instead of trying to look through all this noise and these separate events in the alert browser um, to try to find out what the root cause is. This is where we got down to the on that Jordan slide, that bottom row, where we really cut it down to 129 events from over 1,400 or incidents that were generated. Those are addressable, actionable issues. We're able to cut through that noise and get people right to the heart of the matter that's going on. Yeah, I would say this is where the AI comes in, obviously, and this is the quintessential element of it. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, and Kurt is actually demonstrating some new enhancements from the OpsRamp summer release, which is uh, scheduled to drop tomorrow. The automatic alert suppression. And then he also went through some, some mesosphere monitoring and some other um, enhancements that are going to be dropping tomorrow. So it's it's hot off the press. You're getting the first look. <laughs> but uh, the real value proposition comes in here when we start talking to people. They're like, all the AI ops and everything's nice. But like I said, traditionally, you know, it's like, well, you've got these tools. Now you get got to parse. And a lot of times it's using JavaScript or some other scripting to pull these events apart. Then you got to feed them into a whole other application stack that you have to install, whether it's on the cloud or on premise, into an algorithm. Then you've got to tune that algorithm. Then you're still left kind of without context. It's just what's going on with these events. Well, what OSRAMP is doing is because we're gathering all this, we've made it extremely simple in a quick time to to value to set up the the AI operations. And we can see right here that this one, this ML means it's machine learning. And this is generally most people have uh, two or three rules like this, but this is kind of the core one right here. And to give you an idea how easy it is to set up, you basically give it a name. You say, do you want this to be on or off? Observed is actually a new mode that we added. Um, back on my screen over here, you can see that I had some that, uh, alerts that were blue. This mm -hmm. is because if you want to be able to see what the AI is going to do before you actually turn it on and commit to it, We've mm -hmm. added an observe mode. So this is kind of like a dry run practice. Uh, it's putting it out here and letting you know, hey, these are all things that we would have correlated and told you about um, if mm -hmm. you turned it on. It's because mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, they don't want to just say, hey, turn it on, I'll trust it. They want to see what it's doing ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So we've given mm -hmm. them that option here. And what's the hot off the presses? Hot off, this is brand new stuff. Yeah. So um, if I wanted to turn this on and, and make it active, then I could just flip it to on and go. Uh, okay. And then it would just start doing it in real life. But turning on the AI ops, and here's the magic. It's checking this box and then setting on continuous learning. Okay. That's it. There's mm -hmm. no parsing separate feeds and there's no nothing because we're monitoring. We're collecting all that data and we're pulling it into the engine. We know the language it's speaking. We know the context around all those events. We can automatically take care of this. So I can set it up here and do a co-occurrence co based on the, the topology, based on the correlation here. 
if I turn on continuous learning, it doesn't look just at what's in the data lake behind the scenes. It also takes into account all the new data that's coming in as things come online and the environment changes. Now, if there are things and patterns out there for certain types of events that I want to train the system for that maybe aren't noticeable, I can actually load those in here. Very easy to do. Most people just turn this on and start going and realizing benefits after a week or two. But that said, AI ops wasn't always artificial intelligence ops, right? It started out as algorithmic IT. We right. still have that ability too. Yes, the if then uh, correlations. That's uh, yeah. This is let's take a time slice and then let's look at all these events as they come through, subject metric, and how how similar are they? Are they identical, similar, somewhat similar, and, and build rules for that and group them together to say, hey, these are all correlated or similar together. This is what AI ops used to be. Um, mm -hmm. Co-occurrence is, is where we're taking it now. And then we also have other ways to be able to do basic uh, you know, correlation and upstream, downstream too. But the real magic behind OpsRamp here is using our co-occurrence. That's, I don't want to say it's uh, an easy button, but it kind of is without uh, infringing on Office Max or Office Depot or whoever it was. To, to recap, is it possible to you know, summarize in a few sentences, again, um, maybe just for somebody coming into this, what co-occurrence based correlations are, uh, as you said. Yeah, co-occurrence is essentially when events happen in an environment, um, no matter by what tool they're being detected by, there's generally an order that they occur in. And then you make sense. There's a first one, then there's another one. Think of a cascading failure um, where one event happens, then it happens again, then it happens more frequently, then five things start happening, and then six things start happening on different devices downstream connected to that. That, those are patterns that the machine learning will actually go through and start to make you aware of. And then as these happen and starts to see these repeat over time, it's going to know that, hey, this pattern is happening and that's a failure on this device upstream or a failure with that component. I see. Great. So really, without going too much over time, um, that's, that's ops ramp in a nutshell for what we do. I know it's a, it's a broad value proposition. We sh when we show it to people, they absolutely love it, and they see the time that it can save by having the AI ops baked in and replacing a lot of those legacy tools that they've had out there in their environment for 5, 10, 15 years or more uh, that just aren't cutting it when they need to monitor the emerging technologies or, or they're moving into the cloud uh, with the public clouds or moving into containers and microservices. Yeah, it's interesting. It's pretty well correlated. Or I'd like. It's also interesting to see how you can just switch back to the, uh, the algorithmic um, way of analyzing or purely analyzing the algorithmic correlations, for example. That was pretty neat. Switch back to that as was done before. Uh, uh, what about setup, though? What's Is it possible, maybe just briefly, I know we're running out of time. Uh, to yeah, we're, we're, we're a cloud service. I mean, you mm -hmm. get a subscription, you turn us yeah. on, uh, mm -hmm. we do a discovery of devices that are out in the environment. Yeah. Uh, and then when, if we want to apply a monitoring template, we have over 2,000 monitoring templates. We monitor applications, active directory, databases on the cloud or on-premise. But essentially, you come on here and you say, okay, we're going to do discovery. Well, what type of discovery do I want to do? Now, I can come out here and maybe it's Azure Windows machines. Now, I could come out here and build a lot of rules and pick from any of the attributes that are out here, but a lot of folks like to use our smart filters. I can come out here and say, you know what, let's look at any Windows resource in Azure, and whenever I find one of those, let's assign a pre-built monitoring template. Now, you can copy uh, your own monitoring templates if you want to and make your own, but I'll just grab a couple here. So this is continuously monitoring the environment. It's taking events in from the event stream or CloudWatch, whatever's out there. But when it sees a resource that matches my rules that I've set up up here, I can take and automatically start to apply pre-built monitoring templates that also tie into alert escalations and notifications uh, and rules out here for all the events that are coming in. And, and how many seats typically does an organization well, we don't license by seed. That's one of the things here. We actually license by resources that we're monitoring. And okay. that is, uh, that, that is, we have a whole, you know, calculation based on the type of resource that it's out there. But we don't care about how many people are in the system using it. What we care about is what we're monitoring because that's how we measure our value, right? Uh, the application, the infrastructure resources that, that we're monitoring and getting to that root cause and helping people fix the problems faster, not okay. who's locked in. Is it possible, maybe, I don't know if it's possible or not, maybe just to give a, just an overview or an approximation of a, of a deployment and give me the volume and how much that might cost for a year or 
Anything you yeah, want to I, I mean, I really can't tell you cost, but I can tell you that our time to d- d- deployment, it varies depending on how much a customer really wants to dig in. If they're using us and, and it's a very complex deployment, less than two months to get their entire cloud or on-premise. I've had customers that we've done a trial for. They've onboarded their entire environment on a Friday afternoon when they had a little bit of free time. We're also a popular choice for uh, managed service providers that want to manage different customer environments as tenants. You can set it up, set them up differently as tenants, and then you can all just bring them into the platform and your team can manage them seamlessly. Ah, okay. Interesting. Good. All right. Kurt, thanks so much. 